shall we? Today's video will be shot in Drunkovision by Shaky Cam. Anyway, take Dramamine if you got it, because this is going to get bumpy. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen my Christmas video, this was a gift to me from my wonderful wife. Um, she went to a co local comic shop and, and got this for me. Uh, it's a place that I go to so the owner knows that uh, uh, I picked this up and looked at it several times. Uh, and only to put it back, but she bought it for me, so I'm going to share it with you guys today. So let's take it out of its protective jacket. I know that'll make several of you collectors happy that I'm enjoying this book. I'm not just going to let it sit on a shelf. Let's just start with the cover. It's just gorgeous. You can tell that it's been a photograph from the original print. It's got some aging on it. I don't know why his staff is yellow, but... It has all the printer marks on it too, I imagine. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Just to give you an idea how big this book is. That's you know, look at my hand and then <laughs> it's just oh, I don't even need to turn the page anymore. That's enough for me right here. I could look at this all day. That is great. Definitely think Reed Richards is a self portrait of Jack Kirby. I don't know if it's intentional or unintentional. Look at those, you get those curvy dots everywhere. So, so cool. Look at this. Introduction. Like, that's kind of funny. I've read a lot of things, and you never know what's real or not, but I've always read that John Byrne and... Um, Jack Kirby kind of had a uh, love-hate relationship. I think John Byrne definitely uh, admired him. And this, I've read frequently so he's his favorite all-time artist. And if you follow John Byrne's uh, career, he basically followed all the Kirby books. Um, and I think he tried. I mean, he even did OMAC. Uh, I think he tried to stay true. But... Look at that, it's got all these books, it's got the different pages. I thought about reading this first and then kind of using post-it notes to mark special ones, but I don't know, I think this might be just as nice. Look at this, you can see the old tape marks on here. Look at these notes. Look at these little notes in the margin, isn't that great? The old dirty marks from the old adhesives. You can see in the lettering where things have been erased. It looks like somebody just kind of rough typed out and so it ends. Um, and those two, her looks changed greatly. Her face did um, over time by Jack Kirby. There you see all these tape marks again and hole punch. There's another one. And torch knocked out in fight. Fantastic 471. This is just gorgeous. This art in this size um, is just tremendous. And these these pages, I think they're 11 by 17. And this is definitely fueling my uh, long avoided uh, collecting of original art. But I think because of the price and the scarcity of it, I don't know that I'll ever get involved in that. Obviously, if something pops up, I'll grab it, but um, it just it is a great deal of money to get that kind of thing. I love these notes. That is so cool. I wish that they would have maybe shrunk the overall image a little bit so we could have gotten all these margin notes in there because, to me, that's one of the most interesting parts of this. Look at that punch. Look at that. Look at that panel. That is awesome. Wow. 
don't know what city that is that he's following in. It's definitely not New York. <laughs> Maybe that's how New York looked to Jack Kirby. That's awesome. Pended Mr. Fantastic balled up fist thing. faster here, maybe get to the next issue. No, oh, smell to it. Even has a great smell to it. it. Smells like an old library. I don't, I, I don't know some people, but I love that smell. I used to go to the library with my mom. Uh, she'd be picking out all kinds of um, novels and stuff like that. And my brother and I would go and find books about Bigfoot and UFOs and all that kind of stuff. And, um, it was just a lot of fun. It was an old church library that we went to. Uh, it was a church that was a couple hundred years old, and they converted it to a library. Uh, it was two floors, and um, we used to go there a lot. And my mom would get lost in the in the stacks of books, walking through. And my brother and I would get all those reference books. And uh, in search of was really big at the time um, on television with Leonard Nimoy. So we were always uh, intrigued by Bigfoot and UFOs and supernatural type stuff. So. It wasn't internet, and there wasn't really much on TV other than uh, In Search Of, and uh, we would just go there and kind of uh, be our own little detectives, I guess. Well, there's a whole bunch of notes here. I wonder if these notes were written by uh, Stan Lee, um, and that's roughly all he gave him to go on. There he is. He's my, one of my favorites. It always seems single of purpose. All he wanted to do was destroy our universe so his negative zone universe could live. That's really cool. Some concept art looks like. And this is when they were doing the photo uh, background pages, I think really caught on late 60s, early 70s. Uh, some of the uh, New Gods had those covers, but. Yeah, this definitely has a library smell to it, which is uh, just fun for me. Just really brings back memories. Boy, this is awesome. Got my cup of coffee next to me. It's steaming. I can smell it. And the combination of coffee and library smell is uh, euphoric. These notes are great. That might be my favorite part of this. Look at the expression on Ben Grimm's face. Now he's got rocks for face. And somehow Kirby still was able to convey emotion um, on a, a rock guy's face. Um, I always saw uh, the thing similar to when you look at dogs. Um, they have shorter hair because dogs have eyebrows and, or at least a brow that conveys their uh, you know, emotions. and. I know Ben Grimm always had that too, the thing you could really tell what was going on by his eyebrows. I love when they used to make him surprised if he'd see something really crazy. One panel I can remember that always pops in my head is, uh, it was in a two-in-one when Deathlock appeared and they were fighting and uh, the thing realized that Deathlock no longer had half a face that was uh, android, it was all android. Uh, and that look is that great look that he always has. This is such a great can't wait to read this. He has giant wings. He's just like a metal demon. He's just awesome. I haven't read that story, uh, The Annihilation Wave. Uh, I was out of comic books at the time. I wasn't really reading them, so uh, I'm pretty sure that's in a collected volume. I think I'll, I'll get it and read it since he's always been one of my favorites. Fantastic Four 140 uh, is one of my all-time favorite covers um, in comics. I, I read so much I think the cover came off. I, I recently picked it up Again, um, just it's one of my favorite covers. It's one of those covers that has like uh, panels on it instead of just one main scene. Oh, this is just awesome. Look at, all, look at the machinery he drew. I've seen some videos too of him. There's a lot of documentaries on YouTube and things. And sometimes when he'd draw these giant pictures, he would literally start in the middle and spiral his way out, which to me is I don't know how anyone could draw that way. It's just amazing. His stuff really was awesome. When I was a kid, I didn't appreciate so much the blockiness of his artwork. Um, kind of threw me off, I think. I think when you're younger, you look for more 
uh, photoreal looking artwork. So people like John Byrne and uh, George Perez uh, really kind of attracted me. But as I got older, I started appreciating uh, Kirby and Gil Kane, uh, Bernie Wrights, and people like that that had a lot more detail to them. Rich Buckler, I really enjoyed. Uh, I think Bob McLeod is uh, very underrated. Uh, I always enjoyed Bob Layton's work, too. There's so many. And there's entire channels just dedicated to artists. And I'm sure do a much better job than me. Just thought I'd share this book with everybody. Let's get on to the next issue. Oh, look at that page. I think this book retails for like 150 bucks, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that you can get a deal for this. I, if I remember right, the LCS had it like at 120. Um, and I think he was going to sell it to me for less if I wanted, so I'm sure. If you go to your local comic shop, if they have this, or I haven't even looked online. I mean, you might be able to buy this on eBay or um, what's that other site called? In stock trades, I think. I don't know if they do big format books like this. No, this is just great stuff. That's an awesome splash page there. cylinder I know an Alice dies so he has to have it. It's not immortal he needs to have that or he can't continue to live. Look at that. Definitely had that explorer edge that's missing in comics today. I really hope with the deal that went through and um, Marvel 2 and 1 seems promising that we may get Fantastic Four back in pages and, you know, good stories again. But they definitely have to do it justice to bring it back because the way they sent out uh, Sue and Reed and the kids was pretty neat. I didn't like that story a lot, but at least the way that they um, let them kind of be the heroes at the end of that storyline was kind of cool. So um, they have to bring it back. I think the right way. Boy, this page had a lot of tape on it. My guess is uh, you could see the outline of a bubble there. So they must have changed what he said or or something. Look at that. You can just see the wear on it. Look at that. There you had some kind of ink bleed and all kinds of notes in here. This is when Franklin was born. That awesome splash page. This is from Fantastic 482. Uh, Joe Sennett was at a show that uh, I didn't go to last fall. Uh, but I would like to have met him. He's in his 90s, so if he's around, I definitely want to see him this year. Hopefully, we'll come to a con that I can get to. That's awesome. I love that punch. There's a little lockjaw. My favorite in human. Oh, this is 82. I think this is when the Invisible Woman uh, gets her force field powers, if I remember right. She gets in the way of that gun or something like that and emits those rays. Might not be in this one, maybe it's in another issue. That's just awesome. Well, we're at 14 minutes, I better hurry it up here, right? If anyone's still watching this. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, there are the Inhumans. I, I like the way that they used to be held, handled. They just kind of show up every now and again and it was always a quirky, weird story. Um, boy, look at that. Look 
I understand why they had to do what they had to do with the X Men because they didn't want to promote the X Men, I suppose. But it it never came off right. I'm sure if they could, they'd take it back. So this one's from '83, and I have this one, and I actually have that comic, and it's signed by Joe Sinnott on the cover. Now I I bought it that way, and I, that's not the reason I bought it. I just wanted it for um, my series, but. Um, Maybe I'll take that particular book and have him sign it again. Look at that face. That looks like Kirby too on the thick eyebrows and this kind of blocky looking face. And the Alpha Primitives. do a show up to get their asses kicked, I think. <laughs> they don't really ever accomplish much. A nice splash page of the Inhumans. I like the series in the 70s that George Perez drew. Um, I think I have almost all the issues. I have most of them. I know I have one, one through seven. I don't know how far that went. I believe somebody else took over the artwork afterward and I followed Perez from book to book, so. Obviously, my favorite is when he was on the Avengers. The best was when Kirby drew those covers. I think there was nine or ten of them in a row. And uh, it was that series that was kind of crossing over with Super Villain Team Up at the time. Uh, so that story would bounce around between there. And I think it might have even been in the Champions for part of it. But um, you got like eight or nine covers by Jack Kirby. And then the interiors were drawn by George Perez. I think one or two of them might have even been drawn by John Byrne. So it's a win win. Much better than a beautiful Gil Kane cover, and then you open it up and it has filthy Frank Robbins sketches in it. Ugh. Like in some of the Captain Americas in the 70s. Always depressing as a kid. Because <laughs> you only had a few minutes and you just look at the cover and you had to hope for the best when you grabbed that. Maybe you leaf through it. But if you didn't and you got home and spent your 20 cents or your quarter and then you had a Behold, hideous Frank Robbins artwork. And I'm sure there's Frank Robbins people out there that are offended, but oh well. <laughs> uh, this is Doctor Doom issue. Never been a huge Doctor Doom fan. I guess I kind of appreciate it, but I always had a hard time getting by with dumb name. I know it's probably just a Stan Lee thing. Jack Kirby. I don't think I ever remember seeing that. Usually if you draw the animals, the kind of people animals, like in uh, the Mandy. It's always thinking of Dr. Doom just kind of sitting in his chair. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to set it in here. Guy's purple. And green, if I remember right. It's a really nice silver surfer. And what follows here is no more books, it's just covers and splash pages. It's a pretty nice splash page. Hoping that Fantastic Four number one would be in here, but they're running out of pages here. Look at all that. It's so cool. You can still see the tape. That's a nice signature page someone got. What was up with their hair? Must have changed it or changed the color or something. Who's holding up that whole building? I don't know if I'd be standing there watching it. I need hydraulic jacks. <laughs> so please have those in their cruisers. 
Wow. That's a great page. Daredevil. Medusa. Here's a creepy ass puppet master. It's a nice little thing about that curtain right there. And that's it. Ragdolls, maybe. So I guess that's that. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I'm going to go through this again and again. So um, I'll turn this over. Well, I guess you'll get to see me, but till next time, keep reading or looking. Thank you.